Dude, I literally just said, why can't it be on one of these poles? I looked up and I said, oh my goodness, there it is. We are headed to one of the premier birding destinations in central Wisconsin, the Buena Vista grasslands. Originally a marsh, Buena Vista was drained in the 1900s for agricultural purposes. In the mid-1950s, the area was turned into a grassland and is now one of the largest grasslands in the eastern United States, boasting over 11,000 acres. One of the primary reasons for the change was to create habitat for a particular species, the greater prairie chicken. Are you excited to get to Buena Vista? Yeah, I'm hoping we're early enough to see some prairie chickens. What are some of the things that we can hope to see there? Uh, Buena Vista is great. Uh, of course, the greater prairie chickens. Great for greater prairie chickens. Uh, they're known to be there. Snowy owls in the winter, northern trikes. It's a lot of open grassland habitat, so anything that likes that area, rough-legged hawks. Uh, different types of birds show up in winter versus summer. So we're obviously here in winter, so we're looking for more of the winter stuff. During the spring and summer, Buena Vista is home to many species of sparrows, including Vesper, Henslows, and Grasshopper. Other interesting species, including Eastern and Western Meadowlarks, Upland Sandpipers, Bobolinks, and Brewer's Blackbirds can also be found there annually. During winter, the open fields become home to many different species of raptors, including some that birders love to find. What things do you think we'll see? Like, what things have you had to guess, you know, well, 100% So, prairie, prairie chickens are kind of hit or miss, but uh, we're birding with Rob, and he knows the area pretty well. Um, I think every time we've gone with Rob, we found prairie chickens. So, Don't jinx us. yeah, we'll see. Shrike, I think, should be a guarantee. Rough legged hog should be a guarantee. Bald eagle, I would think, would be a guarantee. Snowy owl might be. Snow, yeah, snowy could be tough. No, uh, I don't know. People have seen it. The, the snowy owls are something that people go for there a lot. So that's kind of one of the, the big ticket birds there. I would say snowy owl, prairie chicken, and short-eared owl. But the short-eared owls usually come out closer to yeah, dusk. Yeah, we'll still be around. So yeah, I don't know if we'll be there or not. We arrived at the grasslands and began scanning the snowy expanse as we made our way to our meeting place with Rob. Any chickens around yet? Yeah, there's a there's a plowed field up here on the left that I've had some chickens on recently. While the greater prairie chickens reside in Buena Vista year-round, winter can often be the easiest time to spot them as they are more noticeable against the white snow and in the bare trees. Let's go see if we can find some chickens. Yep, Let's go. Sounds good. After a short drive, Rob noticed something far out in a plowed field. Oh, the little dark shapes out there? Yeah, Rob. Rob, I feel like you always know where the chickens are. I try to. Oh, yeah? They're just tiny little chicken blobs. Chickens! The greater prairie chicken is a chunky bird of prairies that is considered a species in decline. Adult males are barred with brown and white with orange eyebrows. Males also have feathers on the side of their neck that they can raise to expose orange air sacs that they inflate to create a booming sound during mating season. This mating display is extremely elaborate with drumming of their feet, whooping, cackling, and booming noises. Females are also barred brown and white with a light colored throat and dark line near their eye. Although their historic range once covered most of Central North America, they now only live in select grassland areas in a few regions. Greater prairie chickens feed on leaves, seeds, invertebrates, and more. Nesting occurs in thick grasslands with shrubby cover, and nests are made around 10 to 28 inches high. Greater prairie chickens lay 5 to 17 eggs per nest and have only one brood per year. Buena Vista Grasslands is home to the largest concentration of greater prairie chickens in Wisconsin and is one of the most extensive grasslands east of the Mississippi River. This area is specifically managed for the welfare of these birds and other grassland species. So they really blend in with the grasses. They'd be really hard to pick out if uh, we didn't have Rob here to help kind of tell us where they were at. Fortunately, we have the best guide in all of Buena Vista. That was for. After finding the prairie chickens, we moved on to search for some of the predatory birds that Buena Vista is known for. 
we quickly located a few distant rough-legged hawks, as well as a pair of bald eagles interacting as they flew. On Swamp Road, we noticed another flock of prayer chickens out in the trees. The closest one would probably be over there, and that's not going to get you much closer. Yeah. It might get you a little closer. Maybe. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from walking all the way up there. <laughs> that is true. Huh? Yeah. Probably when you get like a quarter of the way there, they'll take off. Right. No, three quarters of the way there. Wow, well, how vindictive. Yeah, they are. On the same road, we found one of the most fascinating species that overwinters in the northern United States. Is a shrike? Let's get some better views. You want to get out and tripod it up? Yeah, I okay. have to. I have to. The northern shrike is a predatory songbird with a hooked bill, black mask, black wings and tail, gray head and back, and white stomach. Immature northern shrikes may also show barring on the stomach and have brown coloration on parts of their body. Unlike most other predatory birds, shrikes lack talons and will often skewer prey on wires or thorns for later consumption. Northern shrikes breed in northern North America and generally only reach the northern United States in the winter months. Nicknamed the butcher bird, shrikes eat other birds, small mammals, insects, lizards, and more. Nesting occurs in open areas and northern shrikes have one brood per year with four to nine eggs each. They can often be seen perched on power lines or in the tops of trees, searching for food. Shrikes are pretty sweet. Great shrike views. That was ridiculous. Yeah, shrikes are predatory songbirds, and so they don't um, have the talons to kill prey, but they have really hooked beaks that will impale their prey on thorns and stuff like that. They're famous for it. They are. I call them butcher birds. Butcher birds. Yep. That's true. After getting some of the best views of a shrike that we've ever had, we stopped to scan a flock of geese. There, we also had a flyover flock of white-winged crossbills and a common raven. I find raven to be a good bird. I love ravens. We don't get them down by us. We parted ways with Rob and continued cruising the dirt roads. After going a long while without finding any new birds, we noticed some American tree sparrows on the roadside. A short while later, we also found a small group of horned larks and one of the raptors on our list. We had a kestrel. It was on power line and then it flew off in a tree. Pretty distant, really nicely colored birds though. Nice. The American kestrel is North America's smallest falcon. They are about the size of a morning dove and have a small head. Adult males have a rust colored back, gray blue wings, a tan or white stomach, black markings on the face, and dark speckling on the body. Females are similar in color, but are normally more dull. American kestrels breed in northern North America and are permanent residents of most of the lower 48 states. They are declining in certain parts of their range, and nest box programs have helped them recover in recent years. American kestrels can often be seen perched on power lines and tall trees, looking for prey. They feed mostly on invertebrates, rodents, and small birds. How are we feeling? Um. Feeling like it's been a while since we got something to be super excited about. We had the Kestrel was the last thing. Were we um, super excited about that? We were kind of excited about that. But we're trying to find the Snowy and that would be an exciting find for sure. With most of our target birds checked off, we hope to find at least one of the two owl species found in Buena Vista before the day's end. We took a look on every structure in the grasslands until finally a breakthrough. Okay! Dude, I literally just said, why can't it be on one of these poles? I looked up and I said, oh my goodness, there it is. <laughs> Snowy it, owl. It does look like a little snowman. We're currently looking at a snowy owl, and this is one of my favorite owl species ever since I was a kid. I really loved them just because of their white plumage, and I didn't know that they actually made it to Wisconsin until we started birding. The snowy owl is a majestic bird with a white body and piercing yellow eyes. Adult males normally have more white, while females and immature birds have more dark barring on their body and wings. They are the heaviest of all North American owls, which is in large part due to their thick insulating feathers. Snowy owls are eruptive, meaning if prey is in short supply, they will move further south in order to find it. Their normal range for the summer is north of the Arctic Circle, however in the winter, some individuals move south into the United States. 
Unlike most other owls, snowy owls are diurnal, meaning they are active during the daytime. In the Arctic, when it's daylight continuously, they may hunt at any hour of the day. Nests are made on the ground, and snowy owls only have one brood per year, with between 3 to 11 eggs each, depending on available food. Snowy owls prefer to sit in open spaces while hunting, and are often seen sitting up on posts, poles, or other elevated spaces. They are currently on conservation watch to see if populations may be declining. With owls, you definitely don't want to get too close to them. You don't want to freak them out. Um, normally you can tell if they're stressed, they'll kind of either puff up a ton, like more than they were when you started seeing them, or they'll try to look really skinny and be invisible. So just keep an eye on your distance to them and um, make sure that they're not getting too freaked out. You want to keep a good distance, but beautiful bird. Really excited to have this one. Wasn't I saying an owl would make the day? Make, made the day. Doing good, actually. We've spent a lot of time here, but we've got a lot of the good birds. Now we're just waiting for some shorty owls. Honestly, I think that's like one of the only things that we were looking for that we haven't seen yet, aside from the red poles, but winter finches have been tough today, as well as um, snow buntings. long spurs and snow buntings and stuff. Got horned lark earlier, though. Could we possibly get the two owl day? It's possible. If you wanted to go hard tonight, we'd be like an eight owl day. We waited in the twilight for the silhouette of a shorty owl to appear over the horizon. Just as we were about to give up, Derek caught a glimpse of something. There it is. Okay. Um, focus. Uh, I'm it out, dude. It's so tough to focus on that. Yep, you can see his flat face. Yeah? Yep. Nice. I love the flat face. <laughs> big, big fan of the flat face. <laughs> Huge fan of the flat face. Where is he now in relation to the road? Um, left of it. Nice. He's way over there now. There he is. Well, got the shorty owls. We did everything we pretty much wanted to do. I was just about ready to go too. I was yeah. like, oh, we should probably go. Well, good thing you spotted them. You were yeah. super excited. You're like, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else? Are they They're like the only thing that's gonna be flying right now. You saw his flat face, didn't you? Flat face. Well, I just, you know, this is a weird time of day for other birds to be out. That's twilight. Well, you ready to head out? What do you think? Good end of the day? Yeah, we got two owl species and pretty much all of the other birds that you would expect here. The only two things that we didn't find were snow buntings and then red poles, which a flock was reported, but I mean, we had a pretty solid day. I'll take it. We'll take it for sure. Buena Vista Grasslands is one of the most unique natural areas in Wisconsin, and due to the fascinating species that call it home, a must visit for any birder making their way through the center of the state. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Eat your heart out, Kenny Bostick. And you know what you can do? You can ride it down. Oh, well, you beat me too. You know what Ryan always says is they look delicious. Dude, I don't <laughs> want to be that guy, but they look delicious.